Hi guys, welcome to this revision summary video on everything that you need to know for electrolysis. So we're going to start off with what is electrolysis? Now the easiest place to start is the definition, which is the breaking up of a compound or electrolyte using electricity. Now if you can't remember what an electrolyte is, it's an ionic substance, any type of liquid that is molten or dissolved that contains ions that can conduct electricity. Now this always involves direct current. So if you take an example, NaCl, sodium chloride, you have two ions in there. You have Na plus and Cl minus. Therefore, it's an ionic substance. When we turn that into a liquid, so we either melt it or dissolve it, those ions become free to move. When they're free to move, it becomes an electrolyte. So now you know what electrolysis is, you need to know what happens to the ions during electrolysis. And to do that, you need to know the names of the two electrodes. The way I always say to remember that is remember the phrase panic. Positive, anode, negative is cathode. So if we take sodium chloride, which as we already said, contains Na plus cations and Cl minus anions, opposites attract. So your positive cation is gonna to go to your negative cathode. Therefore, the opposite is gonna occur with your anion. Your negative anion is going to move to your positive anode. Now when they get to those electrodes, they will turn back into their atoms or molecules. So if they're metals, it'll go from sodium ion to sodium metal. If it's chlorine, it'll turn back into a diatomic molecule. So Cl minus will go to Cl2. You've got to remember, everything in group seven is diatomic. Now we get onto the trickier stuff. In particular, what are the products of electrolysis? Now if you have a molten compound, so it's just been melted, it's nice and simple. You'll get the elements in there. So sodium chloride will make sodium and chlorine, iron oxide will make iron and oxygen, that's it. It becomes a bit more complicated though when you have something that's aqueous, which means it's dissolved in water. So if we go back to sodium chloride, which is now aqueous, it's going to have our Na plus iron, it's also going to have our chlorine minus iron, but it's also going to have H plus and OH minus. Those are the two ions that are found in water. So you guys need to be able to work out whether it's going to be the metal or the H plus ion, whether it's going to be the anion or the OH minus ion forming at the two electrodes. And there are a couple of rules to help work that out. So if we start off with the cations, the positive ions, nice and simply the least reactive ion will form and turn back into its atom or molecule. So for example, sodium chloride, you can either have Na plus or H plus turning back to normal, if you can remember, usually if it's in group one, two or three, it's highly reactive. If it's in the transition metals in the middle, it's less reactive. Therefore, in between is our H plus. So if it's group one, two or three, H plus will form. If it's in the transition metals, they will form. So hydrogen will turn back into a H2 atom, remembering that hydrogen is also diatomic. The Na plus will stay in the solution. If we move on to the anions, Nice and simply, have you got a halide? If so, that will form, a halide being a halogen. So for example, sodium chloride, I've got a chlorine, that chlorine is a halide, therefore chlorine will go from Cl- to Cl2, again remembering it's diatomic. The OH- stays in the solution. So if we have a look at an example, copper sulfate. The cations are Cu2 plus and H plus, and the anions are SO4 2 minus and OH minus. So here, copper is in the transition metals, therefore it is less reactive than hydrogen, so that's going to form. So I'm going to get Cu2 plus going back to my copper metal. Out of the two anions, I don't have a halide, there's nothing in there from group 7. Therefore, my OH minus is going to form, and that, which you have to remember, turns back into H2O and O2. Second example, magnesium bromide. So you've got Mg2+, H+, Br- and OH- in your solution. Out of the two, magnesium's in group two, so that is more reactive. Your H+, is less reactive, that's gonna form. You've got a halide, which is bromine, so that is gonna form. So your H+, turns back into H2, your Br- turns back into Br2. Okay, on to the next section. In this part, we're going to have a look at how you can write half equations and how you can work out whether oxidation and reduction are occurring. Now, this only comes up in the higher paper, so if you're doing the foundation, the standard paper, 
skip past this section. Now the best way to talk about how to do half equations is to have a look at some examples. So we're going to go all the way back and have a look at sodium chloride. And we're going to have a look at something that's molten. So there are no H+, no OH- ions. So I know I've got Na+, and Cl-. I know that sodium's in group 1, loses one electron, becomes Na+. Chlorine's in group 7, gains one electron, becomes Cl-. What happens during electrolysis then is that Na+, and Cl- go back to their original form. So at the cathode, Na+, will go back to Na, and at the anode, Cl- will go back to Cl2, again remembering it's diatomic. What this is missing, however, is the electrons. You've got to be able to add the electrons to show what's happening between it being Na+, and Na, and 2Cl- and Cl2. And the best way to work that out is to have a look at both the ionic and electronic configurations. So if you start off with the left-hand side and draw out the Na ion, it's Na+, which means it's lost all its electrons. It's Na+, which means it's only lost one electron. All metal ions are the same. If it's in group 2, Mg2+, and it would have lost two electrons. Then draw what the actual atom will look like. So sodium is in group 1, so it will have one electron on it. So how do you go from Na plus with nothing in the outer shell to Na with one electron in the outer shell? You add one electron. So you can see in my half equation here, I'm plussing one electron on the left hand side. Now during electrolysis, all metals gain electrons, therefore you'll always be adding electrons onto the left hand side of the equation. And we can do the same with our anions. So if we draw a chloride anion, it's got a full shell because they've gained electrons, and we have two of them. On the right hand side, I have my chlorine atom, which has lost an electron. Now that's going to become Cl2, it's going to become diatomic, but the key thing is it goes back to having lost that electron. So as you can see from my half equation, I'm going to put an electron on the right hand side. Now because I've got two chlorine ions, I've got to lose two electrons, so I put plus two E minus on the right hand side. Let's have a look at an aqueous solution now. So I've got sodium sulfate, which contains Na+, H+, SO4, 2 minus, and OH- minus ions. Hydrogen is less reactive, so it's going to go from H+, to H2. So I'm going to need two H+, ions to form my H2 diatomic molecule. If it's H+, it means it's lost electrons. And hydrogen atom, you can see from your periodic table, only contains one electron. Now we've got two of both of these, so just remember that. Therefore, to go from my H plus to my H, I need to add one electron. Because I've got two hydrogens and it becomes H2, I need to add two electrons, one for each. So my half equation will be 2H plus plus 2E minus goes to H2. At the anode, I have no halide. Therefore, my OH minus is going to turn into H2O and O2. Now at this stage, what you need to do is you need to balance it. So work out and make sure you've got the same number of oxygens and hydrogens on either side. So once you've done that, you can see I've got 4 OH- minus goes to O2 plus 2 H2O. Now the key to working out the number of electrons that are lost, look at the charge. I've got OH-, minus, which means that's got one extra electron on it. So what I need to do is I need to take that electron away. But because it's balanced, I have four OH- molecules. Therefore, I need to lose four electrons, so I put plus four E- minus on the right-hand side. So the key thing is, all metals will gain electrons, so all your cations gain electrons, so you'll be plusing the electrons on the left-hand side of the arrow. All non-metals lose electrons, so all your anions lose electrons, and therefore, on the right-hand side is where you'll get your electrons. And then the final little bit from this section, how do you know whether oxidation or reduction is occurring? Remember, oil rig. Oxidation is loss of electrons, reduction is gain. Therefore, all anions have lost electrons, therefore all anions are oxidized. And all cations are reduced, all cations have gained electrons. Right, on to the final section of the electrolysis video. The core practical. How can you purify copper using copper sulfate? The first thing you need to do for this practical is learn the steps. So number one, we take some copper electrodes and we clean them. The reason that we're using copper electrodes is they will change in mass. And what we can do is we can take dirty, impure copper and purify it. 
If you were to use inert or graphite electrodes, they won't take part of the reaction. So because they don't change in mass, they don't take part in the reaction, normal electrolysis occurs. You've got copper 2 plus ions, you've got H plus ions, you've got SO4 2 minus ions, and you've got OH minus ions. Copper is less reactive, so that will form. So at your cathode, you will get your copper forming, and at your anode, there's no halide, so you'll get oxygen and you'll get water forming. But we're talking about this copper practical, we're talking about using copper electrodes. So let's forget all that. So we've cleaned our copper electrodes. We then need to measure the mass and label one anode and one cathode. The next thing is we want to get a variable resistor and we want to make sure the current is set to 0.2 amps. Now a variable resistor is something that keeps the current constant. So it doesn't matter if it's 0.2, 0.4, it will keep it at that current. Number four, add your copper sulfate solution and then turn the power pack on. Start your stopwatch and then after two minutes, stop it, dry the electrodes and re-weigh. At this point, you'll notice there has been a change in mass. What you can then do is you can do it at different currents and you can see how changing the current affects the change in mass. So the second part of this core practical is you need to be able to explain what happens. So, if we start off with our impure anode, we have taken our impure anode, which has got copper in there, which is impure, and the copper there, as soon as you turn the power on, will turn into copper 2 plus ions and move into the solution. They are then positive ions and they will move to your negative cathode. When they get to the cathode, they will gain electrons and they will turn back into copper. So if you remember, oil rig, oxidation is loss, reduction is gain, they are reduced at the cathode and turn back into copper atoms. So therefore, the mass of your anode is going to decrease. So for example, it may have gone down by 0.7 grams, I've just made that value up. And your cathode is going to increase. So for example, it could go up by 0.65 grams. Now it's important to note that the difference will not be the same. And you'll usually find that the cathode will not go up by as much as the anode has gone down by. And there's a reason for that, you're going to have your impurities, your sludge forming. When you have your impurities, they will break off and it will fall down and be collected at the bottom of the actual beaker. And then if you increase the current, finally, you'll increase the change in mass. So the higher the current, more mass loss and more mass gained. And that really is everything there is to the electrolysis topic. And that brings this revision summary video to an end. Hi guys, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please click on like down below. You can also subscribe to my channel, you can check out the latest video, and you can visit my website up above here. Bye now.